All right, looks like pretty much everybody who has registered is here. We're gonna go ahead and get started then. You know, they always give me a script and I never follow it. So good afternoon, um, I am Lucas Lachance. I'm the partner of Practice Growth here at LGT and I am happy to welcome you to today's webinar. Um, all of our webinars are now open for registration. We are in the middle of, um, of an eight part series um, and you can check out our full list on our events page and will also be dropped into the chat in just a few minutes. So thanks for joining us for this morning's webinar. Coming up, we've got two more exciting speakers you don't want to miss after today. On July 12th, join us to learn about the world of artificial intelligence relating to data analytics from Dr. Helen Liu at TMAC and Lamar University. And on August 9th, learn seven ways to build an effective communication culture with Parashan Hall. Uh, for those of you joining us for the first time today, Lane Gorman Trubit is a mid-sized accounting firm for businesses of all sizes. In 2023, LGT is providing endless opportunities to gain CPE credit. These events are created to help your businesses grow and thrive. We cover a broad range of topics that are impactful to businesses in construction, manufacturing and distribution, dealer services, real estate, and not-for-profit industries. We also want to make sure that we're providing you with topics that are most meaningful to you. So please make sure that you fill out the evaluation and be sure to leave comments. That is what we use to guide us with our, our content for future webinars and, and sessions. Um, this webinar will be available as a recording within two business days following the event and will be sent to the email that you use to register. The link to our YouTube channel will also be found on our website. If you have any questions about this or any of our services and would like to set up a free consultation to determine how we can best help your business, please send us an email at askus at lgt-cpa.com. This is a continuing professional education event, and you'll receive one hour of CPE credit upon completion of the class evaluation. Following the webinar, you'll receive an email from Prolera, our CPE provider, to fill out the survey and receive a CPE certificate. Please take the survey to gain access to the presentation materials as well as your CPE certificate. And please submit any of your questions using the Q&A function at the lower part of your screen. These will be answered throughout the presentation and live at the end of our webinar, time permitting. Okay, all right, now we got all the housekeeping stuff out of the way. Let's get down to brass tacks. Okay, I am very happy to introduce Josh Woods. He is our marketing manager here at LGT. Um, he's, you're gonna love this description, Josh. With a quarter century of experience in marketing and design, Josh has a proven track record of delivering concept-driven insights and project-based solutions. His diverse career includes more than two decades of distinguished service as a senior non-commissioned officer in the Public Affairs Division of the U.S. Air Force Reserves. There, he orchestrated numerous successful public relations and marketing campaigns and exhibited his design prowess on countless projects for the reserves. Upon joining LGT, Josh brought a transformative energy that resulted in a compelling redefinition of the brand's narrative, creating a tangible impact for clients and our prospects. Serving as a dual talent, he blends his skills as an exceptional graphic designer with his role as marketing manager, responsible for all public relations and marketing endeavors within the firm. Continually evolving his skills and drawing on his ex extensive experience, Josh brings unique depth and value to LGT, helping to ensure our growth and our success. He's also my absolute favorite person in the whole wide world. Please welcome Josh Woods. Oh, that was very sweet there, Lucas. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I'm so excited about being here today. And and um, none of my description was done on cheap chat GPT. <laughs> so that was all, you know, uh, creatively done through the mind. So um, okay. if you thought that that was a chat GPT, it was not. Uh, although uh, probably it probably could have been enhanced, you know, slightly by using this new technology. Um, I'm really excited about being here today and talking to you guys about this new uh, technology that's out there. And it's been hitting the news and out in the open. And really, it's it's been a lot of questions going back and forth as far as like as far as a business. Should I be using this this new technology? Is it ready for for my business? You know, and, you know, there's a little bit of a, a, a yes and no when it comes to that. Um, you know, it, it is new. Um, there are some hiccups, and we're going to talk through those hiccups. We're going to talk through what maybe the pros are going to be about that. And then essentially what we're going to talk about is you know, some of the you know, basic prompting. So this is really going to be a high you know, level view of what ChatGPT is, you know, what the origin from it, you know, came from to, you know, um, how to create prompts 
And if we have time at the very end, I'd love to try and do a live uh, view of something. So you have a little bit of knowledge about what that project or that uh, technology does uh, if you've never used it before. And towards the end, we're going to talk a little bit about um, how businesses can protect themselves when it comes to creating a policy in place and maybe a couple of the settings within ChatGPT that might be able to help you and protect your business as well. So a lot of information, a lot of information. I'm hoping that we can get through all of this today. Um, if we don't, I know that we're going to provide this presentation to all of you who are attending today. Um, so you have it as a reference. If we have time for questions as well at the end, um, more than happy to answer those. And if I can't answer those uh, due to timing, we, um, I'm more than happy to uh, answer those one-on-one -on -one with you and I'll, I'll get all those questions and send those back to you as well. So with that being said, I know Lucas has already kind of done a little bit of an introduction um, on me. So, um, so let's go ahead and start talking about what is G chat GPT. I tried to keep this down into a nutshell just to start it off with. And essentially chat GPT is an online AI software taking your concepts and turning them into tangible content. And whatever that means, right? It could be from data to uh, an analysis to uh, content itself, you know, writing emails, you know, writing uh, marketing content. Uh, all of these things, you know, are, are really utilized within ChatGPT. Now it goes beyond that. It, it has a lot more capabilities. It can actually create websites for you. It's, you know, there's so much involved in this new technology that um, it's, it's, you know, quite you know, quite scary when it comes to where the future of, you know, artificial intelligence is going to. Um, I did do a little bit of a chat GPT um, uh, search on how to provide a good presentation for today. And it, it gave me two different, um, you know, two different suggestions. One was, you know, you, you got to be humorous. You got to be, you know, uh, you got to have something funny to talk about. So having a joke. So, okay, great. And then it also said something about, you know, puppies. So I actually, you know, included a puppy in here. This is our new addition to our family. Uh, very cute. He's a Cocker Spaniel. Uh, he is keeping me up at nights. It's almost like having a new baby um, at home, but he is just adorable. And we're just so happy to have him. Uh, but as far as the joke, I did ask uh, ChatGPT, what, what, what's a good joke to use for this presentation? And this is what it came up with. You know, a snake walks into the bar, the bar man says to it, how'd you do that? Kind of cheesy, right? It's a little bit cheesy, but it is kind of funny a little bit, you know, but, uh, you know, it's just the creative, you know, the, the, the great content that, you know, this uh, new technology can bring. So with breaking the ice out of the way, you know, hopefully I made a few of you chuckle. If I didn't, that's, a, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, my humor is a little bit more dry, um, but let's go ahead and start talking or actually chatting about chat GPT. Um, I got a great quote uh, from a professor who's really getting involved in the AI um, field and really studying this stuff. And he said, today's technology was yesterday's science fiction. And that is so true. Now, I'm not talking about um, Skynet. You know, if, if anybody's seen Terminator and everybody knows that it's, you know, it's the AI that's going to come get you. I don't believe that's what this is. Now, if you ask, you know, one of the founders of this open AI chat GPT, Elon Musk, who eventually got kicked out. Um, he would say, yes, it is the Skynet. It is coming to get us, but I don't believe that's true. Uh, it is a powerful tool, and there's some great information that, you know, as all business owners can get from this. So let's really kind of dive into what, uh, where ChatGPT came from. You know, it was founded back in 2015 by a, a bunch of people, one of them being um, Elon Musk. Um, you know, they got a lot of great funding. You can see, you know, about $1 billion was funded to the open AI by Microsoft back in 2019. Uh, they decided to go ahead and open up demo up back in at the end of November. Um, and it just went viral. It went absolute viral. People were, were jumping on this and figuring out what this new technology can do and, and, and throwing it out on social media. So that just drew a lot of great 
uh, or I guess interest into this new technology. And so, as you can see from my uh, chart on the right side here, ChatGPT within two months had gained 100 million users. The nearest, you know, software, you know, uh, or consumer app that that did that was TikTok, and it took it nine months. If you think back to Facebook or even mobile phones, 16 years it took 100 million people to have mobile phones. So you can see how fast the interest um, it is within this new technology, and with that comes more investors, more people wanting to you know utilize this new technology. In fact, I think Microsoft in, uh, at the end of January here uh, decided that they were going to invest another $10 billion in this new technology. And that's just not just Microsoft. There's a lot of investors that are out there that are throwing big money into you know, new applications, new people who and developers who are creating apps that are built off of this, new, this technology. And a lot of money, a lot of billions of dollars are being put in, into it. So you, you can see that, yeah. You, know, you can see that it's going to be here for a long term. Yes, sir. So Josh, I, I have a question along those lines. Yeah. The, the listing here of all the different technologies, obviously we've seen fads come and go in the past. What makes chat GPT so different? How, what, what is this innovating? How are we getting to use this? You know, I think what it does is it allows, you know, people who are using this and getting into knowing what this software does it's, you know, and we're going to talk a little bit about this when we talk about the pros, but it, it's, it's saving so much time in the day for people when they're, you know, when, when time is of the essence and doing their jobs, okay. um, you know, it, you know, and I, I've got a, a great stat about this, you know, further on, but yeah, it's just, it's improving processes, improving, you know, the, the content that we're providing um, and, and doing it, you know, quicker and faster. That's what we all want. You know, everybody in business wants things done quicker and faster and, and, and making a lot of money out of it, right? So, mm -hmm. and how do we do that? And I think that's what this technology can bring. Um, are there going to be some cons right now? Absolutely, there's cons right now. And as this technology builds, it's going to get better. It, it really is. It's going to learn more. Um, uh, you know, the people behind it are going to learn more. And you're going to see a lot more um, uh, powerful information coming from that. So. And really, the, it, it, it's all about how it's built. What is LLM? Well, LLM is the large language model. That's what this stuff is built on. That is what ChatGPT is built on. I'm going to get a little techie here and a little, you know, um, you know, when it comes to the technology, and hopefully I don't lose you all, but it is the largest LLM that has been released today. There are other ones that are out there. I know Google's come out with one, Anthropo Anthropic, Anthropic, I think it's what it's called, has come out with their version. But this is the one that's been the biggest of its kind. And what it what does it do? All right, so you've got these neural networks that are going out, and these people are are putting in processes or, or um, you know coding to say, hey, I want you to go out into the internet and I want you to learn all of these things based on these parameters. And so when it started out, it was about, I think, about 100 million parameters that the, it sent it out to the Internet to learn. And what that does is it, it comes back and it says, OK, I've got all this information. So whenever somebody inputs anything in a prompt, I can provide information back to them that is uh, that answers their question. Now, uh, that's the old chat GPT 3.5 that was released at, in November. Now, there's a new chat GPT uh, 4.0 that was released that now can go out. The parameters were expanded out to about 10 billion, um, you know, parameters that it was going out and trying to uh, get information from. So uh, you can see that each one is going to be more and more and more, and it's going to sound uh, more like a human than than ever before. Um, which slightly is a little bit scary, but slightly is a little bit more exciting for those who uh, really utilize this. Um, all right. So speaking of, let's go ahead and jump in. Let's talk a little bit more about the pros and cons about this chat GPT and, and this technology. Um, let's talk about maximizing the efficiency of this chat GPT. What are the pros that it can bring? It can bring monetary gain. There's a lot of people that are out there that are utilizing this, um, 
uh, this new software to uh, to to get more money. Um, in fact, I believe Golden Sachs, I put it on here, has suggested that this generative AI could raise our overall global GDP, uh, GDP by 7%. That's $7 trillion that it is going to pour into the economy. That's a lot of money. Um, and, and it's just based off of this single technology. Um, this is why there's so much, um, you know, uh, investors involved in this technology because they do see the uh, advantages of using something like this and using it for something for the long term. Uh, so that's that's super exciting. Um, the second thing I want to talk about here, um, and I'll probably spend a little bit more time on this, is you know increased efficiency. You know, ChatGPT, you know, with good prompting, and that's what it's called, prompting, inputting, inputting that information in, it's going to save people so much time. And we talked about this earlier, right? Uh, save so much time, excuse me, on research. You know, you need to find information about something. It can, it can do that in an instant. Um, you need to write a new email. You're stuck. You have writer's block. You can't figure out what to write. Or maybe you're just not a really good writer. And you need something to help you. Um, this is a great tool for that. You can sit there with the right prompting, you know, ask it to write you an email about a certain subject and a certain topic, um, and it's going to do it for you. Or say you have information that is out there. Um, you got good information, but it's old information. Uh, I know that uh, we've been doing this here at LGT. We've been looking at our old information. How does ChatGPT, it, can it help us? Can it enhance us? Uh, with the current information that we have and revise that that um, that content um, and maybe make it a little bit better. Um, so, oh, sorry, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, no, well, no, no, you say, go ahead. I was going to say- this, uh, is, this is an open forum, Lucas. So you and I, <laughs> we're going to have fun with this. Okay. So let's, uh, let's stay on this slide for a second because yeah. um, we've gotten some questions in the chat and I think this is a great place to really dig into some of this. Absolutely. When we talk about building out efficiencies, what are some specific examples? Um, like you mentioned, you mentioned maybe having them draft an email. Um, the question that came up in the chat is, what is the good prompt? So um, yeah. maybe give an example or two of that, and then I have one that I'd like to share as well. Yeah, I mean, we're going to cover a lot of the prompting when we get to that section. Okay. Um, here, in, here, you know, in a section, I mean, in a, sec a second after we get through the, the pros and cons. But yeah, I mean, it, it, it's the best way to utilize ChatGPT is not just going, okay, I need you to write, I'm going to say something just off the top of my head. Um, you know, I need you to write me a blog article about cats. All right. Now mm -hmm. it's going to pull information about everything it knows about cats and, and give you something, right? Now, right. let's say, you know, that's great. And it's generalized, but I need something a little bit more specific. Maybe I need something that is about um, um, a specific type of cat. I don't really have cats. Maybe I should change it to dogs. I have a dog. Uh, I have a Cocker Spaniel. Maybe I want to know more specifically about Cocker Spaniel. Well, you need to specify that in, into your prompting. Now, can okay. you continuously prompt you know, within this, that, that same chat? Absolutely. That's called what's uh, linked prompting, which we'll talk about. You know, you're giving it something to talk about. Can you talk about, uh, um, can you provide me a blog article about dogs? Um, okay. You know, yes. Can you provide me inf more information about Cocker Spaniels? Yes. Okay, let's get more specific. Can you provide me information about a specific type of Cocker Spaniel? Maybe it's a buff, a blonde type of Cocker Spaniel. Yes. You know, and it's going to feed you that information, but it's all about how much, you know, prompting, how much, you know, uh, information you provide to it is how much you're going to get out of it, right? So, so it sounds like a key to a key to you starting to utilize this successfully is having an idea of the question in mind ahead of time. Absolutely. So the more, so the more parameters you're able to provide um, about the information you expect to get out of it, mm -hmm. the the better the response will be because it has specifics to go on. So the broader the question, the the broader the answer. Yeah, absolutely.
Okay. You know, it's, it's, it's again, like I said, it's how much information you provide. I think the best way to do it is, you know, um, and, and we'll talk about this a little bit later is, you know, yeah. asking it if it can do something, I need you to act like a specific role um, or, you know, act like a, you know, a writer, a blog writer. Um, I need you to provide me a blog article about this specific theme. And here is the bullet statements of information that needs to be uh, inputted into that blog article. Yeah. And so, and it could be as much as five bullets to 10 bullets. It depends on how much information you want it to be in. So again, it's the accuracy on the information you get back is, is based on how much you put in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. I'll so, hold on to the rest of my, I'll hold on to my example until we get to no, the prompts piece. Absolutely. It's it. That's, that's great. And so essentially, you know, like we talked about, you know, we talked a little bit about blog articles, but let's just say you, you have an email that you need to send out and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to write this email. Well, let's go to ChatGP. I need you to write me a professional email about how to, um, um, I don't know, uh, generate, you know, further relationships with, you know, a future contractor or, you know, um, further the sales uh, funnel with this, you know, uh, future prospect, you know, it's going to provide you that information through there too. And social media posts, it absolutely can do this. You can sit there and go in and say, hey, I need a 30 day, um, you know, plan content about a specific, these couple different topics, and it's going to feed you all that content for you. Now, there's a caveat to all of this, right? And I'm gonna I'm gonna reiterate, and I think this is the theme of this, you know, webinar is you have to verify everything that comes out of ChatGPT because it might pull some inaccuracies, you know, it might pull the wrong information. So making sure that you are looking at this information and revising this information is key to it. Never go with face value when it comes to the content that is brought out. So those are the big things, the big, that's going to be, I'll probably say this multiple times, you know, uh, in the next half hour. So, um, so what are some more um, things when it comes to the, um, to the pros content creation, right? And, you know, even though I, the idea comes from the originator, right? You're the originator, you're the creator of this, you know, it's also going to help with our vocabulary use and sentence use. So say, say you aren't, the best writer. That's me. I'm more of a designer. I like to draw it rather than write it. Um, you know, it it's already seeing some some huge improvements. In fact, the Nelson uh, group did a um, survey on this, and they, you know, on a scale of one to seven, they said that you know, it's AI is much better with authors um, at a four point five using the AI than it is when people are not using the AI at three point eight. So you can already see that there's there's you know a level of improvement on on the writing aspect uh, and the content that we are providing um, you know a lot of people. Now I got into a conversation not too long ago. Somebody was talking about okay, yeah, this is great, wonderful, but you know my my biggest fear you know and I'm probably jumping the gun here, but you know my biggest fear is is everything going to sound the same? Yeah, you know when it comes to this new technology, you know is it, is it if I use this, is it going to provide me the same information that it's going to provide somebody else? I don't necessarily believe that. And I think it has to do with how much prompting, how much information you put into it, because that's what that is what it's doing. It's just pulling words out from different, you know, resources, um, you know, to match what you're trying to put into it. Um, so I think that there are still there will still be some different you know, uh, content that's being, you know, pulled from chat GPT, but, you know, a lot of this is so new, you know, time will tell, you know, and, and how is it going to affect, um, on the marketing standpoint, the search engine optimization. So how are your rankings doing? Cause Google looks at what the content you provide and how it ranks your company on a page. So, um, yeah, so content is is very important. I know that the quality is there. You know, we've been utilizing this for the last several months. I know I've been really into it since December. I see the you know the the great use of it, but of course, again, it's about how much I'm putting into it. 
and and that's where I'm getting it. Um, last thing here on the pros, you know, oh, sorry, let's go back. Um, cost effective, yeah, it's cost effective. It's free. The three point five version. Remember we talking about the hundred million parameters? The you know, it's it's free. Um, there is a Chat GPT Plus. It's uh, twenty dollars a month. That's where it's using utilizing the Chat GPT four, so you can get the the more parameters, the more information, the more human like uh, responses back um, if you utilize that. So it's you know uh, very inexpensive uh, to um, get new content or to have something work for you. So I think that that is a big plus. Now Google, you know, they have theirs out there. It's barred. I think it's uh, free as well. A lot of these are free, but you know you know, as time goes on and more people are, you know, pour money into app developers and uh, that's going to be based on this technology. Because I think that's what we're going to see. We're going to see a lot of app developers providing faster, quicker ways of utilizing this technology. And the chat GPT is going to be the engine, I would say, on the back end that uh, their app is uh, utilizing so it's let's just say you you're not really good at uh, um, providing prompting or you're not really creative enough to understand how much prompting to get the information you want there are tools actually out there now and that's being improved that you can just put in a few ideas and it can do it for you and and utilizing the chat gpt on the back end so we're going to see a lot more apps being used and uh, technology that's going to be used um, with this technology on the back end. So, Josh, that relates pretty directly. There's another comment in the in the Q and A section um, where people actually are taking training lessons on how to like prompt engineering. So, yeah. how to create the right type of prompt is a developing area of training and development. Absolutely, and you know, and that's the big thing that you know everybody's talking about. This Chat GPT is going to take over my job. I I disagree. I totally disagree with this this argument that it is going to take over jobs, because I think it's just opening up a new area of expertise that businesses will want to have people with knowledge about, and how to, you know, utilize this technology, how to prompt and you know engineer the the information and the content that they're they're wanting to have. Um, so I absolutely disagree that this is going to take away anything because you're always going to need that person who can swing the hammer. You know, I saw a, there was a, a great marketing uh, billboard. I think I provided this to my team that was on the side of a building that's being built. And it says, you know, hey, chat GPT, you can't do this. You know, so it's, you know, they can't build a building. Um, at least not yet. I don't see any, you know, uh, big machinery that is building tall buildings, you're still going to need the people on the, you know, and boots on the ground to do those things. And I think it's the same way with this, this new technology, you're still going to need somebody on the back end who understands what this technology does and can do it um, uh, efficiently for businesses. Well, and that leads us into what your next slide is, which is there's a lot of, there's a big upside to using chat GPT. And, and I want to make sure we have a chance to talk more about prompting but there's also potential downside. So why don't we touch quickly on some of the, the potential areas for concern with using chat GPT? Absolutely. Yeah. Cause I want to try and get through this little section. Cause I know that we're going to talk a little bit about prompting and I mm -hmm. want to spend a little bit more time on that. And I want to spend a little bit more time on the policy standpoint of, yeah. of this new technology. Um, so the biggest thing, right. I talked about this um, earlier, the biggie, uh, the potential for inaccuracies, you know, Again, the information that you provide into ChatGPT is what you're going to get out. So if you're only giving it a certain amount of parameters or the input that you're providing, it's it's going to it's now it's trying to stretch to fill those maybe holes that you haven't, you know, given it direction to do. And so and a lot of times though too, there all have been prompts that are a little bit more specific that still pulls back inaccuracies on the information that, that comes back. And that's why I talk about verify the information. I just said it again, verify the information that you get, never go off of face value. 
take that information. You need to do a proofread. You need to look at that information, verify that that information is, is correct, that it has some basis to it um, uh, before you absolutely use it for your own use within your business. Um, you know, cause this could really have, uh, um, you know, uh, a downside to your brand, you know, and to the quality and the professionalism that your brand provides. Uh, and you don't want that, you know, that's a PR nightmare when it comes to, you know, getting inaccurate, you know, information out there, then you're, you're on crisis, you know, uh, you're trying to, you know, fix everything that has gone wrong um within what you um the information that you provided so you know so make sure so the, you're looking at that <clears throat> so the underlying theme here though is chat gp whether you're using chat gpt as a prompt and we use it in the marketing world um you can use it as a prompt for business writing um it, it's got applicability across all the different areas of running a business but we still the, the common thread here is still going to be while it can start you off with some good content we still need to have the technical expertise in place to make sure that the information that we're sending is correct. And the things that come out of chat GPT are said very authoritatively. It looks really good when it comes out of chat GPT and you want to run with it, but you've got to make sure that if you're sending it out, that it's the correct message, the correct tone for your company, whatever that is, if it's client facing and that it's accurate. Absolutely. I couldn't say it better myself. You know, you do need the technical expertise to sit there and know whether or not you're getting the information that you're, you know, that you want. In fact, it actually pulls into this next one. When it goes wrong, I pulled this down from Forbes. This is a huge article that's out there. A lawyer uses ChatGPT in federal court and it goes horribly wrong. What happened? Well, he, uh, you know, in fact, I, I pulled it up right here. He actually was trying to write a federal court filing and was uh, and used chat GPT to do this. And it was within this court filing, put in six cases uh, that were absolutely made up. Never have been used before. Uh, <laughs> just pulled it out of thin air. And he filed this in federal court. And now the other lawyers, you know, on the other side, you know, saw this and we we're like, yeah, wait a minute here. That's, that's not even a case, you know? And so yeah. um, I, I think right now from what I read from this article is I'm trying to determine how, what, what to do going forward. So yeah. you can see right here, here's a, a prime example. Now there's multiple, you know, examples out there of people just, again, taking things at face value without looking and verifying that information. So um, yeah, this is a huge biggie. That's why I call it the biggie. Um, so again, you know, so it's important to fact check all your information, including the citations that come from this, um, you know, cause it, it could make or break, you know, you know, the information that you provide, it could hurt your brand. Um, the next one is, you know, confidentiality, you know, there's confidentiality concerns when you're using chat GPT and you're using prompting, you have to be careful and uh, you got to be careful about the information that you're putting into it. Um, the big rule of thumb here is that anything you put into chat GPT, it's an open public domain. So it's going to be using this information to uh, help somebody else. So let's say you're putting in, you know, confidential information, you're putting names, you're putting, you know, your company name in, you're putting data in, maybe you're putting client information in, um, all of that is going to be stored on the open public domain. And it can be used and you don't want to have that hassle where you have a client, you know, get rid of you because chat GPT, you know, picked up on it. So be mindful of how you're prompting, use general terms, use, you know, company X, person A, uh, do not put any data in, I mean, or data that will be detrimental to your business. Um, all of these things can be stored and will be stored based on open AI's um, uh, terms of use. They even have this in their terms of use when you sign up for it, that they can use that. Are there ways to get around it? I mean, not, I wouldn't say get around it, but is there safeguards in place? Absolutely. I think it's very important that you get with an IT consultant if you don't have one 
And if you're wanting to start using uh, ChatGPT, start talking to them about what are those safeguards are. Within the program itself, I know that they have in their settings, you can turn off what's called the uh, uh, history. So it, it, you know, there's a, you go to settings on your ChatGPT and right there, it's going to say, you know, delete history after, you know, uh, after use. So it's going to, it's going to delete all that information you know, from your history. How well that's used, I don't know. There's, you know, still conjecture on whether or not it's storing that information. So the big rule of thumb here is um, be mindful of the information that you put in uh, within ChatGPT. Uh, last one here is the ethical questions, right? I had a conversation with a partner of mine. He was like, you know, okay, is this plagiarism? And, you know, and I'm, I'm a little concerned about maybe the copywriting, you know, aspect of it. Yeah, that's that's the big, big debate right now when it comes to Jack GPT. You know, it's murky waters. Is it copywriting? Is it plagiarism? Uh, I don't know. Um, I know that the copyright intelligent property, you know, laws are still trying to catch up to what this does and figure out, okay, how do we um, how do we come up with new, you know, safeguards when it comes to the information that it's pulling? Is it is it you know is it original content? Do we need to have um, source information? Do we need to, you, you know, does everybody need to source it to chat GPT? I know a lot of companies are starting to do that when they pull information from, uh, from this, uh, technology, they're, they're saying, okay, this is sourced from chat GPT. Uh, just to, just to let the audience know that, you know, we didn't per se write this in its entirety. So we have, we uh, at the firm, as you know, Josh, we have a number of partners who have children who are, well, children, young adults now who are in college. And, um, and one of the things that's been a concern on campuses has been, how do you, how do you corral um, the use of chat GPT when it comes to writing term papers? Um, yeah. You know, and there's, the, the kids are crafty, there's always a workaround. And, and I had it explained to me about how it how chat GPT can, can defeat Turnitin and then the other softwares that are being used um, to identify plagiarized content. But that, that's, another, that's another aspect of it is, uh, you know, folks, if you've got kids at home, are they using chat GPT to help with the homework? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. My wife's a teacher. She teaches high school and that is her biggest thing, you know, and, and a lot of teachers, it, it, is it taking away from the uh, mental aspect of learning how to write, you know, and how to come, you know, use your, your mind to get creative with, with your writing, um, especially at a certain, at an early age, open AI, you know, you know, saw this and, and really it was the complaints from the teacher unions and things like that about it and said, okay, well, we're going to come up with a tool that's out there that can, if somebody uploads some information, we can let you know whether it's been written by a chat, uh, chat uh, GPT or not. There's a little bit of, uh, you know, a murkiness, I guess, with that, because um, if they just change a few words and maybe change a few, you know, uh, phrases within it, it may not be able to recognize that. It may say it's, it's, it's human written. And, and I tested that out. I actually used several of these AI, uh, what they're called AI uh, bots that are out there that can um, check for the content from ChatGPT. Um, and I changed a few things within a content and it said it was human written. And I think that has to do with the new version, the 4.0 that I talked about earlier, because that new 4.0 is very human-like. And the, mm -hmm. you know, the content that it's writing is, it sounds just like somebody would write it. And so it's very hard to detect whether that's written by a bot or an AI program or not. So it's, um, it, again, this is such new technology. It's got a lot of learning to, to do. And, um, you know, so I, I think in the future, we're going to start seeing some, uh, some new things that come out from that. All right. Well, how about prompts? We got yes. pros, we got cons. Now let's get into, oh let's my gosh. really see... How this yeah. Works. Yeah. So let's, let's go ahead and start. I'm going to start talking about this. If we've got a little time, I want to do a little bit of prompting, hopefully live on here. 
um, just so you can see how that uh, this this software is used. But really, there's it's, it's almost a five step process when it comes to prompting. You want to define what your objective is. You know, what is what are you trying to get out of ChatGPT? You know, what tone do you want ChatGPT to use? Is it going to be fun? Is it going to be professional? Is it lighthearted? Um, is it comedic? Um, you know, there's so many different uh, adjectives that you could put in there as far as the tone uh, that it will know, okay, this is how this information needs to be written. Uh, specify the task details, right? We talked about this. The more information, the more uh, details you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. So make sure you're putting that in there and then just, you know, start crafting that, you know, um, we talked uh, about linked prompting. I'm going to talk about it here in just a second, but yeah, it's just, it's constant feeding more input. Okay. I'm, you're not providing what I want. So I want it to be this way. I want it to be this way. Um, until you, you're happy with the, um, with the outcome of what chat GPT does. And then of course, review and refine, right? We talked about verifying. This is the review process, looking at the information, verifying that information is right and refining it. Put your own spin to it. Don't just take it, like I said, at face value. Go in, look at it, rephrase, make sure it matches what you're wanting uh, and, and, and you know, put it into maybe your own words. Remember, this is just a tool. It's, it should not be the end result. It's just a tool that you should be able to use. Similar to Microsoft Word as being a tool, similar to Microsoft Excel being a tool. All of these, all these new technologies are just tools to, um, to how you do your job. So um, I'm gonna go into uh, being, you know, how to basic structure of prompting here real quick. Uh, here's a cheat sheet. Like I said, this is why I wanna send this out to everybody. So you have it on hand. Um, this is an easy way of using ChatGPT. So when you bring up ChatGPT and you have the prompt down at the bottom, you need to input your information. Um, this is the best way to start off. I want you to act as a X, right? What's the role? I want you to be a marketer. I want you to be an advertiser. Maybe I want you to be a journalist, a website designer, copywriter, analyst, whatever it is that you want it to be. And I need you to perform this task. All right. So I need you to perform, you know, I need you to write me a blog article about X, Y, and Z, whatever that topic needs to be. And I need you to give it to me in, let's say, a thousand words. You know, so that's the format. It's a blog article. It's a thousand words. This is how I want you to write that information. And so then it's going to pull that information in, right? So then we go to our, our step two, where is, okay, this is great. Now I need you to make this into uh, this particular tone. Uh, it needs to be more professional. Maybe it needs to be more lighthearted. Maybe it needs to be more focused on manufacturing, or maybe it needs to be more focused on the not-for-profit you know, arena. It depends on what your industry is. Those are good tones to put in there, and it's going to understand, because it's pulling from this information, how it needs to be written. And then, of course, you know, towards the end, you got to review and refine, verify the information that it's providing before you're utilizing it. So that's just the basic structure. That's the cheat sheet of how to uh, start off using ChatGPT. Uh, this is where the link prompting start, you know, where I was talking about the more information you provide, the input you bring in, the better. Uh, hopefully we'll get enough time. I'm going to try and rush through a little bit of this right here, but we'll, you know, Hopefully we can go through the steps and I can show you what it does. Uh, because Lucas is on here, here's what I put in here. I wanted it to act as a pro uh, marketer and provide me an outline of a blog post. And I want it to uh, list me engaging headlines on a blog post based on how the Golden Girls TV show is compared to a business. Um, if anybody knows Lucas out there, you know that Golden Girls is his favorite TV show. But here's something that's just wild and out there that I tried to, you know, um, utilize, you know, when when trying to get some information or, you know, to use as a marketing tool, um, you know, and, and and it's going to be able to do it. I tested this out just a couple of days ago, and it's amazing what it pulled. Um, we're going to find out. Hopefully it does that. So, again, 
Now I want it to pull in some sub heads. That's my step three. I want it to have hooks that, you know, people are going to, uh, when they read my blog post, how it's going to hook them into reading more. What are some of the keywords that I need to use in this blog post? Call to actions. And then, you know, I want to combine all of this information and then I need you to write this whole blog post and, um, you know, give me that final result. And of course, you know, I'm going to tell it to rewrite this whole thing in a style, that tone, that professional tone that I want in a corporate voice and lighthearted personality. So, you know, essentially this is, this is the best way in utilizing ChatGPT when it comes to prompting. So any qu more questions out there, Lucas, that you can think of that, that people are pulling in when it comes to this? Because I know I roll through that pretty quickly, and I, I but I really want to touch on the policy side of this thing. <laughs> No, no. I just I want to know the results of why the how the Golden Girls TV show compares to a business. But I'll run the I'll run the linking myself and figure it out. Yeah, it's great. It's wonderful. It, it it's amazing, and I think it's really smart to to really utilize pop culture, and how you do your marketing too. You know, it, it, a lot of things can become stale, and how do you set yourself apart is, you know, how creative you can be. Yeah. You know. So. All right. Well, I won't. I won't dig too deep into it. Um, we're about ten minutes away from conclusion. Yeah. So, if you want to move to yeah. the yeah, the... I'm going to give this um, real quick prompt here. I, I pulled some other uh, business prompts. We talked about this earlier. Great. You know, these are prompts that you can give uh, ChatGPT. Give me a list of inexpensive ideas on how to promote my business better. Acting as a business consultant, it was the best way to solve this problem. Uh, honestly, I would not utilize ChatGPT for that. You need to utilize, you know, a, a business consulting, you know, firm for that, please. Uh, so, you know, somebody like us at LGT, uh, there's a little plug there, Lucas. Uh, you know, it, it, act as a marketing professional, you know, and create that 30-day social media uh, plan. What's our strategy going to be for the next 30 days? And it's going to pull that information for you. But I want to jump into the AI policies because this is super important. We talk about ChatGPT and we talk about how the great things it can do and the inaccuracies and the, and the cons of what it does. But I think for the biggest you know, takeaway from all of this is you know, if you own a business, if you have a business, if you're involved in a business, um, making sure that you have a policy in place is, is key. Um, cause this is brand new technology. This is open to anybody. So people, you know, employees at your, um, a company can be utilizing this maybe underneath your nose, um, and making sure that you have a policy in place that protects you is super important. But on top of all of that, you know, making sure that you're, you give time to train your employees as well, as far as the best way to utilize it. So if you are going to implement ChatGPT within your business, make sure you have this policy in place, you know, making sure that you're talking to the subject matter experts out there, you know, consultants that are out there talking to your IT consult, you know, uh, people about ChatGPT and how we can safeguard our business a little bit better uh, when utilizing this new technology. So make sure, making sure that you have an objective, making sure that you know, uh, you know what you're going to be achieving from integrating the chat GPT. What's the scope of use? How does it need to be utilized? Is everybody need, you know, need to have access or does it only need to be a, a certain amount of people within your uh, company that's utilizing chat GPT? You know, those are things that you have to determine, you know, within your group, you know, and, and what, what's the risk involved? You know, is it, do we have too much, um, confidential informa information within our company that it's going to be scary to, to put out there. I know a lot of the big banks, JP Morgan Chase, you know, uh, Citigroup, all those things, they've actually banned chat GPT from, from you, you know, use at their companies. Um, you know, is that a good thing? Uh, I don't know. Is it, you know, it's, it's a, again, it's a debate that's out there on whether or not, you know, should we shy away from it or not? I think the same thing could be said back when social media started. You know, a lot of companies were like, ah, I don't want social media. But then it's like, oh, wait a minute. I see the uh, benefits from social media and how it can help my business. But we need to make sure that we have protection safeguards in place um, uh, within our company. So I would say to execute this, um, this policy, make sure that you pilot test it at first. You know, pick a few people, you know, that you want to utilize ChatGPT based on these parameters and see if how, you know, the performance is used with, within that, um, within those folks. And then before you actually full scale implement it within your company. 
and um, and giving those clear guidelines uh, about how to utilize it. You know, no confidential information. Uh, person, you know, don't use our company name. Uh, you know, don't provide any any information that is going to be hurtful for my for my uh, for this business. You know. Uh, don't put any certain data that's, you know, confidential information, you know, to our clients. Those are all, you know, great things to have in place within your policy and, and, and within your training, um, uh, your employees as well. And you may have to do this on a regular basis because it is so new because you may have high new hires that come on board and you need to make sure that, hey, we've got this technology we're using, but here's how to best utilize it. And the same thing goes with social media, right? We have social media policies out there. We don't want our employees out there posting information that may be uh, against, you know, the company's um, uh, general view, you know, so because uh, that could that could come back on on the company itself. So same thing goes with this new technology. Um, I know I'm running a little bit out of time here, but I'm going to quickly go through all, a little bit of this, but global changes that may be coming. Um, regulations. I know that uh, these are things that are being talked about uh, on the Hill. Con Congress, I know, has been talking about this. I, I just was reading an article not too long ago about it. I know a lot of uh, the big companies, technology, Google is really looking into the regulations on how to uh, utilize their, you know, uh, AI program, BARD, uh, you know, and regulating how it's, it should be used. Um, and how they're regulating developers who are utilizing this technology on the back end, right? Remember the engine, this chat GPT might be the engine to a new app development uh, that's being created. Um, volunteer standards, right? Uh, those are being uh, made. Coding, uh, always coding. There's trying to figure out how do I code things to block certain you know, information from uh, chat GPT. And I think this is the biggest one is I know Google's been talking about this too lately is about AI watermarking. How do we create maybe a back end code or a watermark on the back end to say, okay, where did this information come from? And they're looking at trying to do that, especially when it comes to like that, we talked about search engine optimization, that rankings, when I'm looking at websites, and I'm looking at content, um, is this been, you know, has this been generated by AI and how much? You know, and how much is that going to hurt um, the, you know, the rankings of your website when it comes to people looking up who you are? So these are things that are being talked about and on the way. Um, real quick, here at LGT, I wanted to pl uh, plug uh, um, our firm. We do take our clients' privacy and confidentiality extremely seriously, um, which is why we've been actually, like I said, we've been working with our IT and our subject matter cons uh, consultants team to ensure that. We ourselves have safeguards in place because, you know, it's super important as accountants um, that we are making sure that your information is protected, um, you know, when, when it comes to this new technology. Um, exploring the AI landscape, you know, what are some other things? I know I talked about Google Bard. Uh, I know um, Microsoft has their Bing that's out there. Um, they, of course, they're investors in open AI, so they're using the chat GPT on the back end. Um, you know, I put this in there, who am I? I think everybody who has been utilizing Microsoft, you know, Office uh, products for years or years ago, remember this little icon, Clippy? Um, Microsoft is working on enhancing Clippy. So when you're <laughs> in your Microsoft Word, it, you know, the help down at the bottom is going to be generate have the chat gpt generation or that technology on the back end so you can just go right there and say hey i need you to fill in this information i need to write about x y and z and it's going to pull that information and plug it right into your microsoft word or into your powerpoint so there's things on the horizon as well again i talked about google bard microsoft bing and then there is one that's out there anthropic cloud I have not utilized this yet. I haven't looked into it. So please, if there's you know people out there that have, uh, I'd love to know, um, you know, and see what the differences are. I just know that ChatGPT is the biggest because it's the first and it's the largest. So, and that is pretty much it. Uh, I pulled this down from ChatGPT. You know, I was like, hey, what's a great end slide to you know uh, pull everything together? And this is what it provided. Uh, are we are we ready to embrace this as the future? 
And that's the big question, I think, going forward. And it, I think it depends on how we utilize this technology. I don't think that we need to shy away from it. Uh, I don't think you need to ban it. I think it's, you know, it's better to figure out how to best utilize it, you know, within your company um, and, and really making sure that you have safeguards in place as well. All right. Well, Josh, we are coming right up on the very end. Um, there was one question that we didn't get that I didn't get a chance to answer. I've been trying to answer stuff that comes to the chat while you're talking. Um, one of the questions, though, was what are the audio file capabilities for chat GPT? It, I understand that it can't transcribe a live meeting into like minutes, for example, but can it work with an, how does it work with an audio file if you were to upload an audio file and transcribe that into, a, well, a transcript of, of minutes of a meeting is, can you, do you, have you had a chance to work with any of that kind of functionality? You know, within ChatGPT, I have not done that functionality. I know that it does have some capability. I don't know necessarily it has the capability, but ChatGPT has opened up their, um, uh, technology to other developers. So they've added in what's called a plugins uh, or an app store, essentially. Um, and that's usually, that's for the paid version. So if you have the paid version, $20 a month, you have the capability of getting plugins. And I know that there is an um, application out there where you can either transcribe or, you know, um, you know, pull information from an audio file. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. And just so you know, that's consistent with what I was able to Google while you were talking. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of plugins. I think that uh, the latest that I, I saw that there's a, probably about 87 plugins that they've added in within ChatGPT, which is, you know, a tremendous amount. And you're going to start seeing this AI programs in a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, softwares that you use on a regular basis. So it's coming. It's going to be here. For, I think it's going to be here for the long term. It's not a fad. And you're going to start seeing a lot more information coming from it. But essentially, this whole presentation, the reason I came up you know, to Lucas to talk about this is I thought it was a great tool. It's a powerful tool. But I wanted to make sure that you know, businesses understand that they have safeguards and, and making sure that they have safeguards in place to protect themselves. Absolutely. Josh, thank you very much. I really appreciate you pulling all this together. It was a great informative topic. Awesome. Uh, maybe there could be um, a chat GPT 2.0 where we could dive a little bit more deeply into writing appropriate and um, usable and efficient prompts um, and maybe do some live demo on it. So if that's something that you'd be interested in as participants, be sure to put it in the comments. Yeah. Um, on your evaluation. And Josh, thanks a bunch. We really appreciate it. Everybody, we appreciate you attending as well. Bye-bye now. Thank you.